is the National Council for Preservation Education's webinar, second webinar. This one's titled National Park Service Park Programs and National Heritage Areas. Uh, I wanted to start by uh, showing those of you who missed our last, our first session, uh, where you can find it uh, on our, our Nikki's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so here we are on YouTube. Uh, what you need to do is just go to YouTube and uh, do a search under National Council for Preservation Education. Uh, there might be some other sites that have other video from NICP on it, but this is the one that spells out the entire name and um, also has our, our logo uh, on it. And here you can see our uh, broken into five segments because we have five speakers. Um, uh, uh, each of the section from our first webinar, uh, July, uh, excuse me, June 17th. Uh, so it, you can click on any of those, see more detail about it. And uh, last, uh, the last, our first webinar was primarily about the Federal Historic Preserva Preservation Program uh, and some sort of large picture uh, programs. Uh, this one, and what I'll do is, uh, Go into, let's see, there we go. There we go. Um, uh, this session is, uh, uh, as I said, all about the National Park Service and their specific park programs and national heritage areas. Uh, we're bringing this to you uh, in collaboration with the National Park Service's uh, Cultural Resources Partnerships and Science Directory in Washington, D.C. Uh, I want to welcome all the NICP interns participating in the webinar and all the other interns, fellows, volunteers, and others who want to learn more about park programs. I'm delighted that you've joined us. Uh, I'm Julie Johnson, the co-director of the National Council's internship program. Joining me is the director of the program, Michael Tomlin of Cornell University, and he's going to help me monitor the Q&A. I just want to give you a brief word about the National Council's, uh, about the National Council for Preservation Education. NICP is a nonprofit national organization whose members are educational programs at colleges and universities that offer degrees in historic preservation, heritage conservation, and cultural resource management. There are 64 program members of NICP at state universities, uh, public community colleges, private universities and colleges, and nonprofit training centers. The programs are housed in schools of architecture, departments of uh, art history, public history programs, colleges of design, and some are standalone historic preservation programs. And they offer undergraduate and graduate degrees, as well as certificates. Each program meets or exceeds the academic standards established by NICP to ensure that each member provides the highest quality educational experience for its students. If you're interested in continuing your education, uh, perhaps for an MA or MS or a certification, I invite you to visit NICP's website and search under academic programs. That's ncpe.us. The National Council is honored to be joined today by Paloma Balazny, who is the Youth Programs Coordinator of the National Park Service's Cultural Resources Office of Interpretation and Education in Washington, D.C. Uh, Paloma is responsible for assembling today's speakers, uh, who you can see on today's agenda. Um, and Paloma, did you want to say hello and explain the theme of today's webinar? Sure, yes. Thank you, Julie. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Paloma Balazny, and I'm the Youth Program Coordinator for the National Park Services Cultural Resources Directorate, um, the headquarters office located in Washington, D.C., and I work with Julie in administering um, the, the NICP intern program. And I do want to reiterate that 
although this um, webinar is hosted by NICP, everyone is welcome. It's for any intern and anyone interested um, in, the, in the topics today. Um, I'd like to thank Julie for organizing the technology for today's webinar. It's not as easy as it looks, so thank you, Julie. Um, today we're going to hear from programs in the Washington office that primarily work within the Park Service, but definitely not exclusively within the Park Service. Um, and then we'll also hear from the National Heritage Areas Program, which is a unique program. Um, these programs are all housed uh, within the headquarters office in the Cultural Resources Directorate. Um, so please enjoy and do not hesitate to ask any questions um, during the webinar, during the Q&A portion, or afterwards um, by emailing our presenters. Um, enjoy. Thanks, Julie. You're welcome. Um, before I turn the program over to our first speaker, uh, I do invite attendees to ask questions in the Q&A. Uh, there will be time after each speaker, as well as at the end of the entire program, to ask questions. Uh, I'll also provide contact information for each of our speakers at the end if you think of a question later, uh, especially if we have time for a few questions. Um, let's see, our first speaker is Portia Dazi. Uh, Portia Rochelle Dawsey is an emerging public historian specializing in Black history, urban studies, and the post-war era South. Portia received her MA from the University of Central Florida and has been with the Park History Program since 2018. A uh, proud note from me, Portia is a NICP alumna who interned with Park History Program in 2018. So Portia, you want to take over? Yes. Thank you, Julie, for that wonderful introduction. Um, let me know if, okay, great. It's here. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Portia Dossi. I am the newest staff historian in the Park History Program. I started in March, uh, but as Julie mentioned, I was a NICP intern and then later an ACE fellow in the Park History Program these past two years. So, Oh, awesome. So the Park History Program has been around, been around for a while, since 1931. We are located in the headquarters office in Washington, D.C., and we're led by the chief historian. Our current chief historian is Dr. Turkaya Lowe. She's also the acting federal preservation officer. So if you guys aren't familiar with Section 110 of the National Historic Preservation Act, essentially a FPO is someone who coordinates the activities um, for the National Park Service under the NHPA. Our office is responsible for a number of programs, which we'll get into later, but essentially we're, we are conducting research on national park sites. We help evaluate proposed new parks that enter the system, and we just do our best to support cultural resources staff in the regional offices and also at the park level. These are uh, some of our history program areas. So agency history, National Register documentation, we have maritime heritage, oral history, and our two newest programs are the African American Civil Rights Network and the American World War II Heritage City Program. So agency history. Our Bureau historian is Dr. John Sprinkle. He's responsible for the um, evaluating and researching the history of the Park Service as a system and also individual parks. Um, our most famous kind of tomb on this knowledge is shaping the system. Most interns who um, work with park history, you will, your first week, have to read through shaping the system so you become pretty familiar with it. Uh, it just goes through the origins of the Park Service and how it's changed over time. So National Register Documentation. Um, I'm still learning this actually. I'm in the middle of Section 106 training now, but uh, this uh, is administered by both uh, Turkaya and Kelly. And so we focus on NHRP, NRHP and NHL designations from the regions and the parks. So um, not to get into the weeds, but essentially we work with uh, our partners to 
develop this documentation in order to get the parks on the National Register if they weren't already. Next up is Maritime Heritage. So the purpose of the Maritime Heritage Program is to protect our um, maritime resources both within the National Park Service and uh, public sites as well. We also administer grants through this program. So I think recently we helped renovate a 160 year old ship somewhere off the coast of California. Uh, but typically those are the kind of grants we give. Oral history. So our oral historian is Dr. Luann Jones. She currently has a NICP intern, Perry Meldon. Perry, if you're on, um, hi. <laughs> um, so the oral history program uh, documents the history of individual parks, people, and commemorative events that the Park Service has. Uh, we also now have podcasts, which is really exciting. Uh, Luann's been working on this, at least since I've been with Park History. Uh, the first podcast is A Sense of Place, Stories of Stewardship from the National Park Service. Um, so far, I believe it's about four episodes. Each episode focuses on an aspect of um, the Park Service. I think a really popular episode actually is on a rescue mission at Yosemite National Park, which is featured in the picture here. Uh, the episodes I think are about 30 to 45 minutes and they're all online. I'm actually going to put the link to them in the chat feature once I'm finished with the presentation, but they're really great. And uh, for park service buffs, I think you'll, you'll really get a lot out of it. Oh, I also wanted to mention that um, we have an ongoing oral history project telling our own, own telling our own untold stories, civil rights in the NPS. And this is actually something our NICP intern, Perry, has worked on, along with our HBCUI intern, Cameron Nesna. So, uh, sorry, I got ahead of myself. Uh, the African American Civil Rights Network. So this is actually my baby. Um, I work with our national coordinator, uh, Kelly, to commemorate and tell the story, stories of the civil rights movement. So we've been around since 2018. We uh, opened to the public finally in 2019. And as of now, we have about 30 resources. So those are programs, properties, and facilities. Our newest resource is the John Hope Franklin Reconciliation Park in Tulsa, Oklahoma. If uh, you all are aware, the president went to Tulsa the day after Juneteenth and during his speech designated the Secretary of Interior to place uh, the park on the Civil Rights Network. Um, you're listening to the voice of somebody who wrote the proclamation. <laughs> Um, and so that is our newest uh, site, which is really exciting because the Tulsa Race Massacre of 1921 um, is a terrible moment in our nation's history. And the fact that now it's coming more into public consciousness is really great. And that's what we as a network want to do is to bring those marginalized narratives um, to the forefront. So uh, it's, it's pretty cool that I get to do this work. And finally, our last program is the American World War II Heritage City Program. So this one is not yet open to the public. We will be launching probably um, in August during Victory of Japan Day, that commemoration. Um, and I believe our other NICP intern, Leah Bear, maybe she's on and would like to talk about this later, but she's been doing some really amazing work on the World War II home front. And so this program, uh, once it's launched, each city or a city from each state will be able to apply and um, their home front history will be preserved. So, oh, and I guess that is it. Sorry, I spoke so fast. I know I want to stay in the, the 10 minutes, but if I've talked about something you're interested in and you want to reach out to a person who's more of an expert on it than I am, here's everyone's contact information. Also, I'm happy to answer questions outside of the webinar if you do reach out to me. So thank you. That's it for me. That's wonderful, Portia. Uh, and, and, and quick, too. Uh, I appreciate your brevity, especially with uh, such a large program. Um, a, a question I had uh, about World War II um, program, the last one you mentioned, and it sounds like uh, there's a one home front city in each of the states only the one so uh how is that going to be decided do you know any information about that 
So I do. Um, it seems as if um, each state, so within the state um, and also territories, it is open to the territories, um, the SHIPA will be involved in um, deciding which of the cities that have applied will then move on to the national level, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So for instance, um, I'm originally from Florida. So if Miami and Tallahassee um, are neck and neck and the SHIPO decides that Tallahassee um, wins out, then um, at the national level, the secretary will eventually decide uh, mm -hmm. which, which state or which city. Mm -hmm. okay. And so, what, what comes with that designation? Um, Oh, you know, like many of our programs that are unfunded or underfunded, <laughs> um, there, there's no financial incense, incentive, but you get to say, hey, we're a World War II heritage city. I see. I see. Uh, well, and I'm sure there's a plaque and some other things. And um, we, I believe, will uh, have information on the website about each city. But as far as um, grants or funding, not so much. I see. Yet. 